teachers and receiving negative feedback. They learn from their parents um, and their neurological system becomes much more able to control, to inhibit their behavior. So over time, from two years of age to school entry, they are using less and less physical aggression and by the time they enter school, they are pretty much in control of themselves. Researchers examining the development of the nervous system and social behavior are more and more certain that the environment has significant impact on the brain's development and its capacity to control behavior. Numerous studies have concluded that the consumption of toxic substances and poor diet during pregnancy may be harmful to infants. What we know is that mothers who smoke during pregnancy are much more likely to have children who grow up to become antisocial, criminal and violent. There are many studies now in, in several different countries which are all showing that. And it's basically nicotine exposure. Exposure to nicotine during pregnancy interferes with the development of the, fe of the fetal brain. Brain imaging studies are beginning to show brain impairments predisposed to violent offending. So putting the two together, we are suspecting that early exposure to smoking during pregnancy damages the brain in ways that we still need to uncover and find out. And that brain impairment impairs the emergency breaks that we have in our behavior. It means we're more likely to get out of control, more likely to become aggressive, impulsively violent. Other studies have shown that a difficult birth and abuse of babies and young children may also result in significant damage to the brain. There's evidence, for example, that victims of shaken baby syndrome suffer brain damage that may impede their ability to control certain impulses. If you vigorously shake an infant repeatedly, you will damage the prefrontal cortex, which sits in the brain like this. This is the skull of the brain. This is the prefrontal cortex. Rock a child backwards and forwards, and that frontal cortex will bang into the bony protuberances of the skull and get damaged and get bruised. It will not function well. That child will be more likely to become antisocial and aggressive. Go outside. <laughs> Unfortunately, the cerebral deficits that predispose people to violent behavior are also associated with other disabilities. Children who have difficulty controlling their emotions also find it difficult to learn. They are less skilled in solving problems. They have language disabilities and often fail at school. One thing we are certain of, with few exceptions, children do not suddenly become violent in adolescence. Most violent criminals have a long history of aggressive behavior. Dr. Terence Thornbury has followed the development of hundreds of juvenile delinquents. They're difficult to deal with with teachers. Uh, they're difficult to deal with with peers. And uh, so then the consequences of their early antisocial behavior is such that they become rejected by conventional peer groups. They end up hanging around together uh, and then reinforcing each other's aggressive behavior. And the aggressive behavior gradually escalates in seriousness. It expands to the, to the situations in which they engage in aggressive behavior. Most violent criminals travel the same road. Disruptive from daycare to high school, they often end up in special education groups and in centers for delinquent youths. But the tendency to remove aggressive children from environments where they're in contact with non-aggressive children has disastrous consequences. They never learn desirable social behaviors. 
and even worse, by a sort of mutual contamination, encourage one another to maintain their violent behaviors. Young delinquents represent a huge cost for society, the cost of keeping them tucked away and out of trouble, and the future costs if they travel down the path to violent criminality and ultimately to prison. We now know that children's ability to inhibit aggressive acts is linked not only to the care they receive as infants, but also to the amount of stimulation they receive early in life. Some children, because of lack of resources, poor parenting, or inadequate discipline, never develop the cognitive and emotional tools that enable them to resolve their problems without lashing out. Dr. Kate Keenan studies young children referred for aggression problems to the University of Chicago's Department of Psychiatry. In our clinic we've seen children as young as 18 months who are referred because their behavior is out of control and they are aggressive. We typically see children who are between the ages of three and four, although when we ask parents the age at which the problem started, they often say um, that the behavior started around 18 to 24 months. And that's a period which is quite challenging developmentally for children and for parents. Recent studies have shown that home visits that provide support to young parents and crucial information on their baby's development can improve the care they give to their children and ultimately help those children control their violent behavior. Parents are not the only ones involved, of course. As they grow up, children are influenced by babysitters, teachers and friends, all of whom play an important role in determining whether they continue or they rein in their physically aggressive behavior. Children who fail to learn alternatives to physical aggression during the preschool years have many problems. They tend to be hyperactive and to lack concentration. They do poorly in school. They engage in disruptive behavior. They are often quickly removed from their natural environment and placed in special groups, schools or institutions along with other deviant children. To help prevent such a scenario, we must begin by acknowledging that physical aggression rarely starts in adolescence. Some of the biological predispositions to physical aggression are established during pregnancy. In that respect, if we intervene during adolescence, it is much too late. We need to invest in young children. The nurture versus nature debate is over. Both are critical factors. Children can be taught from a very young age how to control and direct their aggressive tendencies. All parents, educators and other professionals need to be aware of this so they can help children learn to use alternatives to physical aggression and help prevent the little darlings from becoming violent adults.
Many inhabitants of the Australian outback see two types of weather, wet and dry. But the Nungubuyu people see five distinct seasons. Next time, we see how subtle shifts in the environment guide their interaction with the land, sea, and animals around them. Moses is a provider in an ancient living culture. He uses his legacy of thousands of years of history and the benefits of the modern world for his clan. For the Nungabuyu of the Northern Territories, all things, past and present, are interrelated. Plants, animals, people, the land, and the weather. Experience five seasons next time on The Nature of Things. I need a straightforward opinion of my work. She took the world by storm. I'm here to stay. Artist, political, sexual revolutionary, based on a true story. Frida, Sunday at 8 on CBC. Do time with Da Vinci. Tuesday nights. Aye, 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 aye. Crime solving in full force. All summer long. Da Vinci's Inquest. I'm not going to push you for a run on this. The Heat is on. Tuesday at 9 on CBC.